Now that you've heard from me, we've got one more special presenter for this year's convocation. Uh, He's one of the people that uh, the students talked about in my interviews. Most of you know the educator. He has been with the district since 99 and is a proud graduate of New Braunfels High School. He has also had the honor to serve as this year's Secondary Teacher of the Year. Uh, Not only has he represented the district well, but he has also been selected as this year's Region 13 Secondary Teacher of the Year. And uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, people need to watch out because he's going to give them a heck of a run for the State uh, Teacher of the Year. He will find that out next week if he advances to that level. Please give a big round of applause for the one and only Mr. Bowtie, Kevin Corpy. Wow, thank you, no pressure, no pressure. Let me start by saying uh, nanu nanu. Welcome to Soiree. Thank you, Mr. Munchagumba especially for uh, demonstrating here this morning that uh, we teachers and educators, if nothing else, are flexible and adaptive. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Dr. Persh, for your, for your recognition. Thank you, uh, school board members. Uh, thank you, administrators, colleagues, friends, family, Dr. Carla Moyer and Mr. Daniel Cordova, who are here down from Region 13 today. Uh, thank you, other special guests, and anyone still here from yesterday's worship services, if you're here. Thank you. I feel lucky, very, very lucky to have the opportunity to speak to you here this morning. And it's not just because it earns me a fast pass to the front of the photo ID line tomorrow at the Education Expo, although that's a pretty good perk. So in preparing for this speech, I had all summer to do it. I went round and round and round and I was wondering, what could I do to tell you that you already don't know? What could I say without preaching to the choir? And then I thought, hey, choirs like music and song, so? I took a recent Willie Nelson song, rewrote all the words, and made it all about teachers, just so that I could sing it up here for you this morning. Uh huh. Never mind the fact that I don't play guitar very well and I sing like a penguin. Nonetheless, I, I did craft a song, and I learned to sing it and play it simultaneously at the same time. And get this, I then made a bold move and I personally invited Mr. Willie Nelson himself to come up on the stage this morning and sing it along with me. I thought that would be great and motivating. Well, esteemed colleagues, you're in for a real treat here this morning because Mr. Willie Nelson is not here. (laughs) Which means I'm not gonna put you through having to listen to me sing and play. You're very, very lucky. You have no idea. So instead, I'm gonna offer you something called a koan which I will get to here shortly as I go on. In other news then, can you believe that it's been 79 days since we were all gathered here together? 79 days. That's 1,896 hours or 113,760 minutes. I know you already know that. But here's one maybe you didn't know. That equates to 2.162 times 10 to the negative second decades. That's, yeah, decades. That's how long ago we were here, okay? That's probably a little bit too much math, so I'm not going to do more conversions. My point is, this morning, that we have been out of our classrooms for a very, very long time. With a patient pertinacity, though, we've all officially, miraculously, valiantly, and selflessly endured yet another summer break. (laughs) And I know how hard it is because sometimes I find it hard just to make it through a two-day weekend, you know, without being in my classroom, surrounded by my life-sapping, I mean, life-supporting students to be there with me. So congratulations to everyone here. You've made it. However, when we were all last year together, as any great teacher would, Mrs. Dunn gave us a summer homework assignment to recharge our batteries, to spend time with friends and family, and to remember our source of strength. And just like when Mr. Reimer 
ends his high school intercom announcement with, have a good day, unicorns. Her assignment was not a suggestion or a recommendation. It was a required non-negotiable mandate. So I trust that each of you then, for your own sake, completed your summer assignment. And by the way, if you're new to NBISD this year, you're off the hook. Obviously, you were not here, probably, to get the assignment. And so we're just happy and elated that you are here with us now. Or back with us again, like in the case of Mr. David McRoberts, everybody. Is DMAC in the house? We also got Eric Norris back this year, gonna be coaching at the high school, some good unicorns coming back. So, to abandon the preliminaries and deal with the major tenets of my message, to say what I wanna say without delay, to cut to the chase, to get to the point, Trimming the fat, getting to the skinny. <laughs> Without further ado, I want to tell you now a short story. Not a short story like Jack London's To Build a Fire, which is actually very long and very sad, but possibly relevant. Nor a short story uh, like one that would explain why little Johnny cannot ride the rides, the adult rides at the amusement park. Not a short story like that, no. You'll get that one later, joke grenade. No, by, by short I mean a few letters and even fewer words. It's a Zen story that reveals truth. It's called a koan. And as you might know if you're a Confucius scholar and not a confused scholar, every truth has four corners. But today, unicorns, I will reveal only one corner of that truth. The short story that you will soon hear then, shortly, in a few sentences from now, is also a somewhat familiar story. So, if you've heard it before, feel free to mouth along as I read it. But if you haven't heard it before, of course, feel free to watch my mouth with your ears, please. Okay, so here goes. I got it right here somewhere. Kind of low-tech with the paper today. Okay, here it is. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She went for a walk in the forest. Hang on. That is actually the wrong story. Technical difficulties everywhere today. That was actually my backup story, my backup lesson plan for my sub had I called in sick this morning. <laughs> the Goldilocks story. But I'm actually here, right? So, I got it right here. Okay, for real now. Here it is, coming at you live. Me, the real story. Lean in if you want to. Two people are lost in the desert. They are dying from hunger and thirst. Finally, they come to a high wall. On the other side of the wall, they can hear the sound of, of a waterfall and birds singing. And above, they can see the branches of lush trees cascading over that wall, bearing fruit that looks delicious. Suddenly, Sean P. Diddy Combs appears over the wall and offers them some water and then helps one of them over the wall and into a four-door Fiat where he is whisked away to Utopia and the best, best blueberry yogurt on the planet. The other person, however, the other person instead, returns to the desert to help other lost travelers find their way to this oasis. Now, I know what you might be thinking. <laughs> you might be thinking, wow, that was an unnecessarily long, awkward pause, right, Coach Fair? You might have been thinking, hey, that would have been a great time for the kiss cam to go around, huh? <laughs> no. You might be like, hey, I thought Fiat only made small cars. What's this four-door thing? Or maybe, maybe you've tuned me out and you're, you're just trying to think, where, where are you going to go to lunch today? You know? Or maybe you're trying to think, what's the best route to take when I leave here this morning to avoid the congestion? And, and those are all great concerns, and I'm not going to address any of those, except to say that the Deppenschmidt to Schmucks to Ingle Road to I-35 route used to be a fast, uncongested route. Used to be. Okay, anyway, the story 
that I just told you is allegorical, of course, and it has many interpretations, some profound, some trivial, some commercial, and if nothing else, gives you some fodder for today's lunch or not. What I posit, however, the one corner of truth that I offer you today is that the two unnamed people in the story are really one and the same, and that person is you, and you, and you, and Coach Huey, and you, and me. We are that two in one person. Sometimes we walk the path of self-indulgence, instant gratification and pleasure. For example, summer break. It's all about us recharging. But at other times, most of the time in fact, we teachers walk the path of altruism and self-sacrifice for others. A path that begins again today and starts as soon as I quit talking at any one of these conveniently marked exits. Now we all arrived at this wall or a similar wall 79 days ago, weary, thirsty, and ready to see to our own needs. And over that time, we have slaked our thirst, we have rested our bodies, and of course we have recharged our batteries. Today's the day though that we say bye Diddy, and we climb back over that wall and into the unknown, all of us going in different directions, but with the same vision and the same goal. To help our own students, our own blueberries, our own pennies, so that we can help them find themselves and guide them to their own salvation and their own enlightenment to empower them with the skills and the tools that they need to get there to encourage and motivate them along the way and to instill in them the belief in the confidence that their own success in their future is not just a mirage but a reality waiting to be realized that was the serious part of the speech so, I say let's have a storybook beginning then to a great year, one full of hope, optimism, determination, daring, energy, and of course enthusiasm. Let us go forth embracing not the comfortable predictability of yesterday, but the realities of today and all the unknown possibilities of tomorrow. To quote the late great Robin Williams in one of his most defining moments on film, playing a character quoting Walt Whitman. We are members of the human race, and the human race is filled with passion. What good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists, and identity, that the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. That the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? Hashtag let the play begin. Hashtag many meaningful verses. Hashtag what Jocelyn Estes said. Hashtag best year ever. Hashtag no filter. Hashtag go blue. Thank you.